today's um, Ladies of Ruby's Media Prayer of Thanksgiving. The theme for this Media Prayer of Thanksgiving is Higher Jesus Higher. You know, some people, when they see if the flyer, they'll be like, is this a child play? How can someone name a, a, a program, I Are Jesus Higher? You know, you know, so many times we just sing this song, we don't even, we don't even have the deep understanding of the word in the song. You know, we follow the lyrics, we don't follow the, the, the melody, the drums and the everything, the instruments they play with the song. But have we ever tried to just be in the spirit and say, Higher Jesus, Higher? Higher, 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 Jesus, higher. By the time you are singing that song, you are telling the devil, shame on you. Whatever I'm going through, I know my father is going to win the battle. So it's more than how we usually sing this song. This song is more than that. That is the kind of the, uh, the um, understanding the Lord gave me about this when I was seeking his face, when I was asking him, what do you want us to say? We know we are always coming together to thank you. What would you like us to say? And I received this word, higher Jesus, higher. When I received this word, my sisters, people, things that are going on, things that were happening in the country that time wasn't covered. This kind of a thing supposed to cover, like, why, why Jesus, why? But the Lord gave me this for us to be able to know that he never fails. He never fails. So I want us to take our Bible and read from Psalm 100. Before I go to the Psalm 100, verses 1 to 5. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. O ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence, presence with singing. Now, know ye that the Lord, he is good. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. <laughs> it is he that hath made us. Not we ourselves, not we ourselves. So whatever you're going through, you know that you are not the one that put yourself in that situation. He made you and is working something, something big on your behalf. He's working. He, we are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gate with thanksgiving and into his court with praises. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. For the Lord is good and his truth endures to all generations. People of God, the Lord is faithful. We heard from the word of God that we need to sing praises to the Lord. Irrespective of what we're going through, thank him. So let me say that Higher Jesus, higher is a matter of healing and praising Jesus for the things he has done and the things he's yet to do. So it is not when we are happily alone, we should be giving thanks to God or we should give thanks to God. Even when we are not in good condition, even when we are faced with many challenges, we should do what? We should give thanks to the Lord. You know, we sing this song, higher Jesus, higher, 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 higher Jesus, higher. It's more than that. It is not the song we just sing when we are happy alone. It is a victorious song. It is a song that is meant for a battle. So when you are going through a battle, instead of you to give up, it is the kind of song that you can sing. Just to tell God that whatever comes my way, I will forever be with you. I will be on your side. I will not give up. I said, it's a song that some people sing when they have victory. Like Miriam, like what Miriam did in Exodus chapter 15, verses 18 to 21. When the Lord helped them, helped the Lord to help them to kill Pharaoh, Pharaoh in that sea, in that sea. What, what did Miriam did? She gathered all the women together. She was so surprised. Send the miracle. The Lord killed their enemy. It's not, the, it's not only the Pharaoh that died. Even all the people that followed, all his warriors died on their behalf. So this woman was so, she was so amazed to see the miracle. She gathered women together and she sang praises. They sang praises unto the Lord. Deborah did the same thing. When they won the battle against Syria, she, she, she sang sweet songs to the Lord. Those are the people that sang songs to the Lord when they won a battle. 
people of God. We have some people in the Bible that, that give thanks to the Lord, even when things didn't, didn't go well for them. What of Habakkuk? What of Habakkuk that said, even if the fig tree do not, do not blows up, I, I will not stop thanking God. This God is faithful. Though I've planted so many things in the garden and I didn't have results, but yet this God is still my God and he will forever be my God. This is the kind of attitude the Lord is expecting from all we, his children. That is not when things are rosy that we should be coming to him and be praising him. In fact, the unbelievers can do that too. When they are happy, when they will just have a surprise from, from, from someone, they will say, ah, thank you, thank you, thank you, God, thank you, Jesus. But it takes a woman of understanding to be able to give thanks to God in the midst of adversity. People of God, the Lord is calling us to always give thanks to him. Not only when we are happy, not only when things are going on with us, going, going on well with us, but even when we don't have food to eat, even when we don't have clothes to wear, even when we don't have hope of, for, of tomorrow. He's saying, I am beside you. Do not stop thanking me. I will surprise you. But eventually you are here and what you are going through is like you should be crying. It's like you should gather people together and say, can you see my life? Can you see? Hmm. The Lord is saying that is not your portion. Crying is not your portion. Give me thanks. Give me thanks. Dance. Dance. Think as if we don't have that problem with you. Think as if we don't have that problem. What I, what I just shared with us just a few minutes ago, I went through something that I don't, that when, when I'm just alone, I'm just saying, Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you. I suppose not to be saying, Father, I thank you with what I have on my table. But what I know that this God has never failed me before and will never fail. Let me quickly go to what we can, what we can gain when we give thanks to God when we are when we are we, we we have when we are happy so when we sincerely return all the glory to god when we are happy what do we stand to gain our happiness will not meet with sadness yes oh like um miriam and, and, and deborah they give thanks because they were happy they give thanks because they won a battle yes the lord really really stood by them the lord didn't give them before after giving them give, give, giving thanks to him so when you give thanks to god when you are happy Yes, it's good. It is not bad. It means that you, 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 you are grateful. Yes, and your, your happiness will not meet with sad, sadness. What, will you, what, will you, what, what do you tend to, to, to gain? When you give thanks to God for what the Lord has done for you, your testimony will be permanent. Can you see about that leper in Luke chapter 17, verses 12 to 19? Out of the 10 lepers that the Lord Jesus Christ healed, he said, go. Go and show yourself to the high priest. You know, the man ran back. Only one person came back. And his, 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 his a miracle was made to be complete. So it was perfected. It was perfected because he came back to say, ha, though you told me to go and show myself to some people, just I just have to come and say thank you to you first. So when you remember to say thank God to what the Lord has done for you, your testimony will be permanent. Another thing is that songs of joy will never cease from your mouth. You will just have something to always thank God for. You will just always have something to thank God for. Yes, David is the best person. With all what David went through, he's always thanking God. Hey, the more David thank God, give thanks to God, the more you will see that this man will still thank God because the Lord is always surprising him. So songs of joy will never depart from your mouth. If truly... If truly you give thanks to God when you receive a miracle and we will, we will receive more miracles. That's another point. When you give thanks to God for what the Lord has done for you, you will receive more miracles. What of Hannah? The Lord gave Hannah Samuel. And he was, she was faithful to the, to the promise. She was thankful. She was happy. The Lord gave, the Lord gave, gave her that little, little boy. And when the Lord saw how um, um, Sarah fulfilled all our uh, vows, it was like, oh, I need to give this woman more children. And the Lord blessed her with more, with more children, three uh, boys and two daughters. Those are the things that we, can, we tend to gain when we praise God for what he has done. So that is why we, it is always good to share the testimony. 
when you enter the program and the Lord bless you in the program, don't know, hide it. The Lord will just bless you more and perfect it when you share the testimony because your testimony is capable of lifting another person's soul up. So what do we, what do we tend to gain when we give praises to God in difficult situations? What do we tend to gain? Number one, it provokes a quick response to your problem. Yes. Yes, yes. You know, you are. God knows that you are going through a lot. You are not happy. Your house is boiling. Your work is not full. You're, you're, you're having a problem at your place of work. And you are just giving thanks to God. You are really provoking with quick response to your, to your prayer. So you are provoking quick response to your prayer. If you, all you could do is just to praise God, praise God, thank God, thank God, like, like Asaro did. When, like, like Jesus did, excuse me, Jesus did during Lazarus' um, miracle. When he wanted to raise Lazarus, he said, Father, I thank you because you always watch, you always hear me. You always, whenever I call, you always hear me. Jesus gave thanks in advance before raising Lazarus from the dead. Wow. And God couldn't do anything that to say, no, you've done, you've done something that no one has done before. This man will come out of that tomb and the Lord raised Lazar, Lazarus. So when we give glory to God in difficult situation, we provoke quick response from the Lord. Number thing, but, but the second one is that it makes God, it makes you God's favorite. People used to say, oh, this God doesn't have a favorite people. God doesn't have favorite favorites. Mm, people of God, when you get to a certain stage in your spiritual life with God, you know that God will just always make you his priority. <laughs> you know, God will just always make your case his own, his own, his number one on the list. Many people are still asking, but you have asked once is, and he's answering immediately. Okay. So we can say that, yeah, we, God can make you his favorite. So the next thing is that it puts your love more in God's heart. Thanking God when things are not fine with you. When you're supposed to be crying, when you're supposed to gather people together, can you see my life? This is what I'm going through. This is what I've been through. And you are just giving thanks and you're smiling. This will make you, we make God to love you more. We make God to love you more. So you be dear to God's heart. So it makes you also, it makes you God's number one prevailed daughter. It makes you God number one prevailed daughter. The next thing is how do you make praising God our life, life, lifestyle? Majority will find it difficult to praise God. As I said it, it is the only thing when things are going well with us that we give thanks to God. At times, Holy Spirit will tell you to, te we tell you to dance around in your house. Holy Spirit will tell you just kneel down and dance and begin to worship me. And you begin to say, Father, this place is dirty. Father, this is not the time my children are. You know, begin to give excuses. No, you don't do that. When you make praises your life, lifestyle, you don't even care of where, where you are. You just go into tongues or you begin to praise God. Even when you are walking, Father, I thank you. By the time you begin to say, Father, I thank you, before you know what was going, you will begin to speak in tongues, you begin to praise God. So what do you, how can you make God, make praising God your lifestyle, number one, by giving your life to Jesus, which, op which opens your eyes your eyes of understanding to, to his death, to his death of love for you. When you give your life to Jesus, your eye of understanding will open to how much love God has for you. God is in love with us. The Bible says, where we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. He made Christ to die for us while we are yet sinners, not when we are righteous. So the love is so much. The love is so much you cannot just describe it. So I can read uh, Philippians chapter 3, verse 10, which is that I may know him and the power of his restoration and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. You need to find time to seek in the uh, to seek God's face. Learn how to be of the Lord. Give your life to Jesus. Let him be in charge of your life. If you want to make prayer, pray, praising God your lifestyle, it's going to be difficult for you if you're always in the flesh. To switch to the spirit may be difficult. But when you have Christ in you and you have allowed the Holy Spirit to be your mentor, to be your guide, to always direct you, when the Lord is telling you to praise him, it will not be difficult for you. We can also read the reason why 
we need to give our life to Christ in order for us to be able to to be able to sing praises to him. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 18 to 9 says, and may you have the power to understand as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, how deep his love is. May you experience the, the love of Christ. No, it is too great to, under, to understand fully. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from the Lord. It is only when you come down and you sit and you'll be able to see the love of God for your life and you yield everything to the Lord. I am giving you everything. Oh, Father, have mercy on me. So the first thing you need to do, if truly you want to make precious your lifestyle, is for you to give your life to Christ. And the Lord will help you as you made that decision in the mighty name of Jesus. By giving to the point, by giving, by giving to a by giving to a point in your life, yes, sorry, by getting to a point in your life where you will believe that Jesus never fails. Yes. When you believe that Jesus never fails, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. You need to get to a, a stage in your life that you say, no, I can't turn back. Even when, when things are not working for me, even when this challenge is like, is not going away, hi, Allah reward you, will not turn back. It is when you get to that stage, that is when you know how to praise God. That is when you know how to praise God. I know that is by having the understanding that the perfect gift and food you can offer God is praises, is thanksgiving. The perfect gift and food you can offer to God is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving, thanksgiving. You will not eat, God will not eat uh, my donut. You will not eat your jollof rice. You will not eat your pancake. You will not eat everything. Only The only food you can offer God is what is your thanksgiving. If truly you love God and you would like to offer him food to eat, Shower him with your love and thanksgiving. Yes, another thing, another way you can give, live a life that, that will always praise the Lord is by saying everything, everything the Lord is doing in your life as a big deal. See it as a big deal, you know? You just walk down to your toilet, you use the toilet and you come out safely. You don't think, you think it's a normal thing, you know? You just think it's, it's your right for me to walk from my dining to the real restroom and to come back. My sister, so many people have gone like that or to the bedroom and they didn't come out or they came out dead. So when you begin to see all these things, little, little things that we don't count as a big deal, we will know how to give him thanks. You, you, you take a plate of food and you will be able to eat it. You eat everything and you did not have, you, you did not have any problem along the way. Your digestive system didn't shut down. You were okay. You, you drank water. You are uh, like, I mean, hey. you didn't see all these things as a privilege. You always count it as, as a normal thing. It's only when you get to the hospital, you know that, hey, but I need to thank you more. Eh? Even for the grace to eat is a, is a privilege. I saw a, a, a little thing, a, a, a write up somewhere this morning. I said, I, someone, someone, someone eventually finds solution to a problem. Someone is talking. One was the one talking. They said, someone finds solution to a problem that he, he, she couldn't eat for nine months. I was like, she, could, she was not fasting. That was a sickness. We are not mocking. I'm not mocking that person. I'm just letting us know that we should always have, see everything God does for us as a, as a privilege not as our right. So count it, always count it, all, all, all those little, little things. Let it be meaningful to you. It is That is when you'll be able to say, thank you, Jesus, every time. So finally, what do you tend to lose when you fail to praise, praise him at all times? My sister, the person who failed to praise God at all times, you will lose relevance, relevance in God's presence. Yeah, you will lose relevance in God's presence. Because you don't, you don't know that the Lord is working on your behalf. What you are looking at is what you have been asking for and, and the Lord has not done. He has, he has his own purpose of not giving you that thing now. He has his own purpose of, doing, of bringing that thing to pass in your life at the right time. So if you think that I don't want to worship God, you, you become irrelevant in, in, his, in his presence. I pray that will not be a portion in the mighty name of Jesus. Another thing that tends to happen to someone who fails to give praises to the Lord at all times is that the, there will be no priority given concerning 
so that person's request. Yes. So when you fail to praise God at all times, the Lord too will be looking at you because he will never leave his children who are always praising him every day and be attending to you that you do that you, do, that you are like, like um, what's in a why um, daughter to, to him. He will always focus his attention on, 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 on his people. So he might not make your request his priority. Finally, you will live a life of struggle, tumor, and stress when you don't praise God at all times. When you don't, when you don't cultivate the habit of worshiping God on a daily basis. People of God, I want us to know that as we go into the prayer of thanksgiving, today, the Lord Almighty will hack into our voices in Jesus' name. We are here to praise the Lord. We are here to seek his face through thanksgiving. And I know that he's here with us because one of the things I've been te telling God is that you've done it again and you can do it, you can still do it again. And the Lord will do it for us in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Father and our Lord, we want to thank you for the word we've listened to. Thank you for blessing us. Father, beyond what I've said today, Father, talk to your daughters more. People that will still see this video later, please touch their hearts. Let them, have, let them cultivate the habit of thanking you even in difficult situations. Thank you, Father, because you've answered. And at the end of our journey in this world, let us bring within eternity. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen.